I'm never coming back. Great, see you next week. For a while I owned and ran a garden supply store. I had a lady come in and she wanted X amount of soil. Well X amount turned into 7.5 pallets of soil. I didn't have this all in stock so I called my supplier and asked to see if they could deliver and drop this at her location. Since it wasn't terribly far away they agreed. Customer and I agreed on pricing, she paid me, I called the supplier and they had the soil to her in a couple of hours. She called and said the soil was dropped off, thanked us for everything and I was feeling pretty good about myself. Then the next day happened. Lady came storming back into the store and started yelling at me L. Why did you make me pay $9,000 when I only need two bags of soil? I stopped for a moment and had to think about our entire conversation yesterday and was more than a bit confused. Me. After finally I picked my jaw off the floor, excuse me? Lady. I asked for two bags of soil yesterday and you charged me $9,000. Me. Ma'am, you asked for X amount, not two bags. You even asked how much soil was in the bags and that was how we determined your quantity. L. I did no such thing, I asked for two bags of soil. Me. Ma'am, I do video and audio recordings and here, I had multiple signs posted, should we go check the tapes? L. There's no need, you just need to take the soil back. Me. Ma'am, I can't do that. All soil sales are final and this was a large quantity order. Also, I don't know what happened to it last night so I don't feel comfortable sending it back to the supplier. L. After more yelling, I'm never coming back, I'm leaving bad reviews, and I'm telling everyone to not shop here. Me. Great, see you next week. Sure enough, she showed up next week acting like nothing had happened and wanted to buy some more stuff. Woman tries to have me arrested for stopping her from shoplifting. I, 19F, work at a large craft retail store and it was almost closing time. I was at a register waiting for stragglers to check out, and had my back towards the exit, which is right behind the registers. There was nobody coming up, so I was looking around, and I noticed a woman walking quickly behind me towards the exit. By the time I saw her she was already turning towards the doors and walking into the foyer which leads to the outside entrance, and I only saw her back and a little of her side, enough that I noticed her arms were crossed over her chest like she was holding something against it. I didn't much of it, just yelled, have a good night. I guess she was so focused on getting out of the store she didn't notice me standing there, so when I spoke to her she startled really badly and dropped what she was holding. It was a little vase that cost like $10. Dot. So immediately I walked towards her out into the foyer, I don't know why she stayed there, she could have just booked it and I wouldn't have followed her, and I asked her if she was planning to pay for the vase, kind of in a snarky way but it was late and I was too tired for this bullcrap. She got huffy and said yes, so I picked up the vase to bring it to my register and check her out. I don't know if that set her off or what, but she suddenly got pissed and snatched the vase away from me. She said, I paid for this, and then started talking some bull about my dirty paws being all over her property. I already knew what this was gonna turn into, so I went to the registers and picked up a phone and paged for my manager. A couple of my co-workers came up to the registers and she started talking to them about how I had tried to steal her property and accused her of shoplifting, and yelled at her. Dot. They all knew she was lying already because I'm a very quiet, shy person, and I've never raised my voice let alone yelled at someone at work. The lady started telling my co-workers to call the cops, and also started saying that I had physically cornered her and that she was afraid for her life. Now this woman was tall and pretty broad, and I'm average height, thin, so she's a good 5 to 6 inches taller than me and much bigger besides height. There's no way I could have intimidated her that much. My co-workers and I just let her carry on until my manager got there, and it turned out that he had been suspicious of her earlier and had been checking the cameras. When she tried to start her bullcrap on him about having me arrested and stuff, he already knew she didn't pay for anything and told her to leave and stop harassing his employees. She told him that she would be calling cooperate, he said go ahead, and she stormed out after that. Dot. The kicker of this whole thing was that she was wearing what seemed like expensive clothes and nice jewelry, and when we watched her leave it was in a car that looked pretty new, expensive. And she was trying to steal and make a big fuss over a little $10 vase? when she obviously has the money to afford many of them.
I hate customers like this. Coworkers try to steal $200 worth of groceries with this one neat trick. I worked at a grocery store with a guy who, one day, came in for his shift and opened the register at the far end of the store, with two out-of-service registers between him and the other working registers, imagine eight registers, lanes, one to five are good, six and seven out of order, and eight also good. Had his friend shop for about $200 worth of groceries, check out at his lane, and he rang it all up as 99 cents, he rang it all up as one lemon, as it were. The thing is, the friend he was helping also worked there. Also as a cashier, the head honcho was in that day. His office oversees the whole store so he saw it immediately. Both idiots got fired right then and there. Though the one guy who was buying the groceries took off before being confronted. I had gotten along with the guy who did the cashiering, but the guy who tried to steal, I mean, technically they both did, but I'm talking about the guy who had the day off, always rubbed me the wrong way and I wasn't surprised when he did something so stupid. Man cannot understand how 1 euro and 99 cents plus 1 euro equals 2 euros and 99 cents, claims our POS's program to add things wrong and charge more. Had an opening shift yesterday. This man comes in, the supervisor later claimed he spent 40 minutes in the dried fruit section trying to steal. So he comes up to my till, with a 1 euro and 99 cents pack of chocolates in hand and a 1 euro and 5 cents packet of dried raspberries in the other. I tell him the total, and he absolutely cannot understand how it came up to 3 euros and 4 cents. He tells me that it should be 2 euros and 4 cents. I keep repeating to him that 1 euro and 99 cents plus 1 euro makes 2 euros and 99 cents, not 1 euro and 99 cents, but he starts yelling about how I don't know how to count and I'm trying to trick him. So I get out my calculator, as he refuses to come check out the pause screen with only those two items and the total on it. I work it out for him on the calculator. The total shows 3 euros and 4 cents. This does not convince him and he literally says, your machine is wrong. I am exasperated at this point and my customer service facade has totally worn off, I'm asking him what 1 plus 1 is and he just shouts, okay you're right because you don't know how to count. Dot. The supervisor and my manager step in at this point and I don't know what they told him as my view was blocked by other customers but he left. I had rang up his things already. He came back a few minutes later, much calmer, and told the supervisor I hadn't given him change, which is not true because the manager confirmed he had seen me count it out and give it to him. The supervisor just gave him the change because at that point we all wanted him to leave and hopefully he never comes back. I don't know how you reach adulthood without knowing what 1 plus 1 is and that a computer can never get a calculation wrong as far as I know. Woman proves herself wrong and storms out of store. I work in a family-owned pet food supply store. We have this program that often has deals like, buy one get one free, for certain products, and when a deal is going on we'll put a little paper sign up by the product. A woman comes in and buys three things, a case of the most expensive cat treats we carry, the case was like $40 it's crazy, and two small bags of freeze-dried meal mixer things. I ring her up and tell her her total and the woman gives me the ugliest look. One of these is free, she grabs one of the freeze-dried meal mixer bags. Me. It didn't ring up as free. Our system is as weird. Some of the time it's up to date with the program's deals and will automatically ring it up as such. Other times we need to enter the stuff into a completely different system to redeem the deals and rewards. It's a pain. Customer. Getting more aggressive and angry. The sign said it was buy one get one free. I'm about to tell her that she may be right and I will go check the sign when my manager who was behind the counter with me speaks up. Manager. That's for the kibble. You buy a bag of kibble and get one of the freeze-dried bags free. Customer. In the nastiest tone I've heard from someone yet. That's not what the sign says. My manager gets up and she and the customer go to check the sign. It's quiet for a moment and then the woman comes storming from around the corner. You know what, forget it, she's absolutely irate. She storms out the door without any of her stuff. My manager returns to the counter. Just like she said, the deal was, buy a bag of kibble and get a bag of freeze-dried meal mixers free. 
Nothing crazy, but one of the wildest and sort of funny experiences I've had. Sorry if this is confusing to read, I'm bad at words lol. Two months in the customer service job and it finally happens. I work for the company that employs electricians for small jobs. Part of my job is to answer the phone, take their information, type a quick summary of the job, and then open the work order for the electrician, which they will then use to contact the client and do the requested work. So the municipal elections are happening and it is Friday afternoon. Suddenly I get a call from a new client, who tells me that the light fixture, at the polling place nearby, has a light fixture that is not working. The light, that is not working, is located right above the booth. After getting all the basic information, the call starts pretty much like they all do. The people are not able to see the numbers they are writing on the tickets, can you send an electrician to fix the lighting? She says in a flustered tone. Sure ma'am. Since this seems to be urgent, I can give you the information of the electrician who is currently nearby working another job. Dot. There is also another electrician who is currently here, at the office. I can ask if they are free to take a work order right in. At this point, I am interrupted. Yes, this is very urgent. Go and talk to the one who is there right now, we are located about 15 minutes away from the polling location, so this might be faster, considering that the electrician who are currently on the job, can't really just leave to do another job. So I take the phone with me and head toward the break area to talk to the other electrician. After walking around the warehouse, I find the electrician talking to his phone, most likely with another client. I do some gesturing to him, asking if he is free after his call. When I get the answer, I update the woman who is on the phone with me, the electrician is speaking to another client right now, but as soon as he finishes his call, he can call you and. At this point I am interrupted once again. Just take his phone and tell him that this an emergency. The election is surely more important. There is, and I am being serious here, a 10 second silence, as I am feeling confused. After collecting my thoughts and realizing that she is being serious. I finally answer, I am sorry ma'am but. I am cut short yet again. At this point her talking gets so fast and even more confusing. There is a lot talking about how I would not want our company to end up on the local newspaper, she actually mentioned some bigger ones too, but oh well. For not offering the proper service and thus ruining the election. After more silence and awkward answers I finally give her the information of the electrician who is working nearby with the promise of also following through with the one who is currently on the phone. She also asks for contact info of my supervisor, which I also give her, because I have to. Dot. So the phone call ends and the electrician comes over to the office after finishing his call. I give him the summary of the job and as I am doing that, the electrician who is with me, gets a call from my supervisor. He collects his equipment and leaves to do the work order at the polling place. After an hour or so he returns from the job and I ask him how it went. Apparently the woman had contacted pretty much every company in the area that offers the electrician services. So when our electrician arrived at the venue, there were a total of six guys from different companies in already running around fixing a single light fixture. In the end, the light bulb was not screwed in tight enough. The janitor of the venue, had changed all the light bulbs before the booths opened, leaving that single light bulb loose. What I heard is that the woman had threatened multiple local companies, at the site, about their slow response and unprofessional behavior. I know that the municipal elections are a big deal, but I have never before thought that the organizers are under so much stress that they would act like this. I guess it was just a matter of time before I encountered a customer like this, but the scale of this, damn. Edit. I did drop by the guy who writes our invoices, as I was leaving for the day. All the companies will, most likely, charge all their working hours rounded up, because of all the time wasted. What surprised me though, was that the organizers told everyone at the site to direct their invoices to the venue owner. Apparently it was his fault for not following through with the preparations properly. Whether he is the one who has to pay for this fiasco, or if he then forwards it to the organizers after, is something we will probably never find out. Title for the experience I just had sure you were. 
This just happened to me. I'm manning self-checkout and a guy finishes up his order. He is walking out of the self-checkout area and in the bottom of his cart are three of those large firework multi-packs. Now the thing about fireworks is they need an age check because where I am you have to be 18 to buy them. This even includes those little snap things you throw on the ground. So I know he didn't pay for them because the machine didn't call for me at all. I step out and ask the guy if he was going to buy them. He starts saying one thing but backtracks and says he was going to put them back, too expensive. Being the helpful cashier am I take them out of his cart and tell him I'll take care of them. He just kind of stands there for a moment before leaving the store. May your day be filled with joy and happiness. And please remember to subscribe to Upvote for the best quality content every day.